K3 has some very interesting um, things going on with the platter and the interface between the record and the platter. So on top of the uh, oversized K3 platter sits the OMA graphite mat, which we make and sell this a la carte. You can buy this mat. It's not even very expensive. This is a mat that I developed a long time ago to replace the mat on the Techniques SP10 direct drive turntable, which we were then modifying um, for our clients. And that, that had a, um, a, a very uh, high-tech gel-filled rubber mat, which I did not like the sound of. And I explored what was out there for mats and uh, things like uh, very exotic copper and metal mats, glass. And I found that, that um, graphite uh, of this polycrystalline type, so this is actually a, a very hard grade of crystalline graphite, uh, which is the element carbon. And uh, you will find graphite, what's called graphite, which is really essentially carbon dust in plastic, in, in, in you know, in a, uh, like a, a colloid, um, meaning dust in a, in a resin. Uh, that doesn't sound and behave at all like this material. This is actually crystalline graphite, very hard graphite that we have machined um, at, at, a, at a special place to make turntable mats. And it's just the best, was the best mat that I ever encountered, uh, no matter what the turntable. And we tried lots of different things on this and found that the graphite mat was also the best on this. So we, we went with it. Okay. This, however, is what I really want to show you because this is the game changer. When you look at um, very, very expensive, the, the Uber decks or hyper turntables, uh, going back a couple of decades, what you find is that the really expensive ones all have what's called vacuum hold down. And uh, I was with Josh Bonatti last night. We were shooting his Neumann lathe. It has a massive plaid. It's like this big. It has all these little holes in it and ridges that the, the lacquer master sits on. Okay, And the holes when the vacuum's activated, suck this disc down and hold it very rigidly to the platter because the cutting head is like, you know, exerting force on this disc. And if there wasn't something to affirmatively hold it down, it would move and then the groove wouldn't be precise. So it's very important to have this vacuum hold down when you're cutting a master. What happened, I believe, is that as, as vinyl went down, um, but, but some companies started to produce expensive turntables in the last 40 years, in Japan especially, in Asia, a bunch of these, these cutting lathes were, were shipped for very wealthy Asian audiophiles. Um, and they started to use these Neumann lathes, for example, as home turntables. And basically as sort of status symbols show off objects because a Neumann lathe is not really what you want to use for a turntable. But this, this, this hold down thing became a, a kind of a cult thing. And as soon as one, one company or one person did this, it became something like, this is how we're going to show off how, how hot our turntable is, how sophisticated it has this vacuum hold down. Um, the problem is that vacuum hold down requires the um, the platter to have some type of rubber interface because otherwise it would just scratch the shit out of the record, okay? So the suction of the vacuum in these vacuum hold down turntables is essentially forcing the record to mate with the top of the platter, which is rubber, which is always bad sounding. So there's an inherent problem with the vacuum hold down thing. Plus, it's difficult 
and expensive to put into, into operation and to keep in operation. And you have to have a pump that's you know, sucking the, you know, creating the vacuum. That makes noise. It's just a big pain in the ass. It's not necessary. The reason it's not necessary is that what you want is that the record, no matter whether this is a, a $1,000 turntable or a ten dollars or $100,000 turntable, you want the record to affirmatively mate with the mat and stay still and flat. Okay? You don't want any kind of flexing or movement. So Richard Krebs, the engineer and designer behind the mechanicals of, of this turntable, came up with a, just an ingenious idea. He, um, he created a little plastic disc, and I, I believe Richard told me he went through more than two dozen iterations using different types of and durometers of plastic, densities, diameters, heights. This just fits over the, over the spindle. And then this, this clamp. And this clamp looks like kind of a normal record clamp, but it's not. Because it has a collet that locks, that tightens and locks onto the spindle. But you'll notice that it's, it's concave. Right? It's not flat. And inside of this is also the same oil and sand, you know, particle mixture, like a type of sand, that's inside of the platter and the arm board to dampen this, which was very difficult to do. So this is an inherent, inherently damped component in itself. Okay, so let me grab a, a disc, show you how this works. It's super cool. You, with two hands, you hold this fixed and tighten this. Now, it flexes the record. It's, it's tight. It's forced and flexed the record to mate with this mat, all right, in a very positive mating. And this is you know, as good or better than any vacuum hold down with none of all that nonsense in a, in a simple mechanical um, fashion. If I take this off, you'll see this is, this is flexy, you know. But once this is on, it, it forces the, the record down. This solves the problem a vacuum hold down and allows the record to mate to our graphite surface which is far better than any kind of rubberized metal ridges which is what's necessary if you do a vacuum hold down platter and I just wanted to mention that because this is one of the things that people say oh does your your turntable have vacuum hold down no it doesn't oh well then it can't be any good go figure <laughs> 